Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all around the world to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I hope... Everybody's energized. That's so lovely. I hope everybody had a nice Father's Day. I, uh, I had brunch with my kids, mm. and then I went home and grilled a hammock with my new beard trimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump had uh, quite the busy weekend, because Friday was his 78th birthday, and he's a little sensitive about aging. In fact, last week, Trump said this birthday was the one he wanted to ignore. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday, Donald. Are you one? Are you two? And I, I don't, we don't have time for this. You're, you're, you're just old. You're old, okay? <laughs> Trump celebrated in Florida at a fundraiser that featured this towering cake, which looks delicious and looks like it stormed the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> that fondant can take a punch. Hmm? It's a lovely cake, but I'm surprised they didn't go for Trump's favorite cake, Fudgy the... Well. <laughs> no surprise. No surprise Trump turned the celebration into one of his rallies and introduced his new get-out-the-vote line. I actually tell our people, we don't need your vote. We got so many votes, we don't need them. <laughs> okay. That's okay. You, you, you heard him, Trump, folks. He doesn't need your vote. You know what? On November 5th, take a U-Day MAGA style. <laughs> Go get your gun a Manny Petty. Maybe a couple's massage with your truck. Yell at your teacher about how the... Yell at your kid's teacher about how the very hungry caterpillar transitions into a butterfly. Have fun. <laughs> I understand. Brown bear, brown bear. What do you see? I understand why Trump is not thrilled about turning 78, because his entire campaign message is Biden is old. But if Trump won at 78, Trump would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. He's so old, they're gonna have to swear him in on a stack of Depends <laughs> in a walk-in bathtub. <laughs> now, of course, while Trump's hairstyle stays forever young, you can't say the same about the brain uh, right below it. We got more proof of that this weekend when he tried to shame Joe Biden into taking a cognitive test and brought up his old White House doctor, Ronnie Jackson. That name again. Ronnie Jackson. <laughs> Mr. Trump. I took a cognitive test and I aced it. Doc Ronnie. Doc Ronnie Johnson. Does everyone know Ronnie Johnson? I love Ronnie Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Ronnie, Doc Ronnie Johnson. Uh... He gave me the test, then I went home to my beautiful wife, Malaria, and... <laughs> I went home to Malaria, and... and my two hideous sons, Urkel... <laughs> and Carl's Jr. <laughs> hey! At the same event in Detroit, Trump played some of his greatest hits, like comparing himself to a notorious gangster, like that's a good thing. I got indicted more than the legendary Alphonse Capone. Has anyone heard of Alphonse Capone? Scarface. He was so mean that if he had dinner with a person and if he didn't like him, he would kill the person. They would never find him again. Like Mike Lindell, he wouldn't like Mike. You know why? He'd say, those ads, they are driving me crazy. Let's get rid of this guy. Al Capone would take Mike out in two minutes. You'd never be fat. He'd be buried under the World Trade Center. Now, I'm no psychologist, but does Donald Trump want to murder Mike Lindell? <laughs> At first, Al Capone liked Mike Lindell because he helped Capone, but then Mike started to say dumb stuff that embarrassed Alphonse. Alphonse does not like to be embarrassed. It makes him feel small like he did in front of his father, Fred Capone. So, <laughs> Alphonse took Mike's my pillow and pressed it over his my face. <laughs> until, until Mike stopped my breathing. <laughs> I have, I don't understand. Yeah. I no longer, I don't try to understand. Yeah. Yeah.
Now, I have, I have one more clip to show you from the Detroit event, but first a warning. The following contains graphic descriptions of Donald Trump showering. <laughs> Children, women who are nursing or pregnant, and the elderly, pull up a chair and watch this. <laughs> I've had the experience. I take a shower. I want that beautiful head of hair to be nice and wet. Lather. I want it to be lathered beautifully. And I get the best stuff you can buy, and I dump it all over. And, I'm, and then I turn on the water, and the damn water drips out. Takes me, I can't get the stuff out of my hair. I take very normal, very regular showers. Before I turn on the water at all, I dump the best stuff right on my head. Great premium head dumping stuff, big old. Big old head dump, but the water, I turn the water on, it just drips out, and the head gunk hardens into an impenetrable layer. <laughs> Building up slowly over decades like sedimentary rock until you see this magnificent lacquered helmet I have on today. <laughs> anyway, is everyone done picturing me all nude and lathered up? Because they're about to serve lunch. They're about to serve lunch. It's little smoky links and a cream sauce. <laughs> Who's hungry? Who wants? <laughs> Good try. On Thursday, uh, Trump, Trump went to Capitol Hill. And this is surprising. No one smeared poop on the walls. He was there. He was there to meet what used to be called the Grand Old Party. And even some of those spineless doofuses noticed that his brain be broke. One source in the room said the former president's speech was rambling and like talking to your drunk uncle at the family <laughs> reunion. Bear in mind, the person saying that was a Republican congressman, so it's really like your drunk uncle pulling you aside to warn you that there's an even drunker uncle <laughs> in the room. This guy or this guy totally needs to lay off the sauce, sauce over there. It's embarrassing. No, him right over there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pee over here. Don't tell your aunt. Don't tell your aunt. Why are there, wait a second, why are there a bunch of umbrellas in this urinal? <laughs> but the big headline coming out of Trump's Capitol Hill meeting is that he called Milwaukee, where the Republicans are hosting their nominating convention this summer, a horrible city. <laughs> this man is about to be in a world of deep fried hurt. <laughs> I know from personal experience, you do not mess with Milwaukee. In 2020, in 2020, you remember, you remember this. In 2020, the Democratic convention was there. I made a few innocent jokes about it. And four years later, I'm still legally barred from buying bratwursts. <laughs> Milwaukeeans were so angry that to make amends, I flew there for a formal apology tour. I participated <laughs> in the Brewers' famed sausage race where I lost to a six-year-old girl. <laughs> and then apologized to a stadium full of 40,000 people who I'm pretty sure did not accept the apology. <laughs> I learned my lesson the hard way, and I have since learned to appreciate Milwaukee, the eternal city, the Paris of Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Sheboygan. <laughs> and what a beautiful name, Milwaukee. Some say it's from the Algonquin for the good land. Others say Milwaukee is Potawatomi for cholesterol. I believe that every city in America were destroyed tomorrow except Milwaukee. The Republic would still roll on because Milwaukee is America. As Thomas Jefferson himself once said, Schlemiel, Schlemazel, <laughs> Haas and Pfeffer Incorporated. Thank you for your service, Milwaukee. America loves you. No, I'm angry. Trump's team tried to defend the remarks, saying the former president wasn't calling the whole city horrible, just crime in the city, with one aide saying he was directly referring to crime in Milwaukee. Now, he does have a point. Milwaukee has become so soft on crime that this July, their convention center is hosting a convicted felon. <laughs> After Congress... That's a stroker. That's a bit of a stroker. After the trip up to Congress, Trump addressed 80 CEOs at the quarterly meeting of the Business Roundtable. The reviews are in, and they are bad. 
the big money guys said things like meandering and he doesn't know what he's talking about and I was surprised. <laughs> you were surprised? <laughs> Do you not watch my show? <laughs> I am hurt, Jamie Dimon. I think you should find yourself a new pickleball partner. <laughs> Trump told the assembled CEOs he would lower the corporate tax rate from 21% down to 20%. And when somebody asked why 20%, he replied, well, it's a round number. <laughs> that unto itself had a number of CEOs shaking their heads. Oh, I love a nice round number, like 20. Then again, have you seen eight? <laughs> that thing is all curves. In my opinion, in my opinion, eight is a total 10. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Dr. Anthony Fauci and the star of Masters in the Air, Colin Turner. And when we come back, my pilgrimage to Rome. Stick around.